Today is the day. We're gonna be lifting the house and I'm gonna take you guys through the whole process with us. I am super excited for this, but also very nervous. So let's see how it goes. So as I said before, this steel beam is gonna be used to lift the house, but also we're gonna to need to kind of substitute the foundation on the sides to support the floor joist. So we're gonna have another steel beam over through here and a steel beam on this side of the house. Now that bay window needs to come out in order to run the steel through that opening, as well as that one right there. We might actually have to knock out a few blocks there. But that bay window is coming out and I wanna show you guys what's going on. So we started pulling some of the trim off of the bay window and as you can see, these bay windows are notorious for water issues. We've got all kinds of rot underneath of here. So this thing needed to come out regardless. So the first step of the process is completed. We got the cribbing set up to support the beams that are going to be lifting the house. We're also going to be adding some beams across to carry the center beam as well. So we're going to have four jacks, one on each corner, and we needed to knock out some holes and take out that bay window in order to get those beams in place. With the beams in place, then the guys can set up the jacks. Like I said, add those other steel beams across to support that center beam, and then start the raising process. All right, so the house got lifted about four feet up in the air. And the process of that is actually really cool. The way that they do it, they set up this cribbing, which is all solid oak, six by six cribbing. And that creates a nice stable pillar for those big steel I-beams to rest on. Then they can jack it up and they jack it up about 16 inches at a time. And then they add more cribbing, readjust their jacks, and then jack it up some more. Now, the cool thing that I learned that I did not know was that when it comes to jacking a foundation or a house like this, you're using hydraulic jacks. So the hydraulic fluid is actually going to flow to the lightest corner of the house. So the problem with that is, is if you try and jack them all up at the time, it's just the hydraulic fluid is gonna flow to the lightest corner. So what they did was they jacked them independently, but the other issue with that is, is with four jacks is if you jack them independently, the house will twist. Think of like a chair sitting on the ground. If you have an uneven spot, it is going to twist that structure. In order to prevent that from happening, they were able to link two of the corners together that matched as, as far as weight goes, and then they were able to jack it like a three-legged stool. So as those two corners, as you're lifting one of the other two corners, those two corners, the hydraulic fluid will flow and that will go and the house will rock like a three-legged stool, not twisting the structure above it. With the house jacked up, now we can move on to the foundation work, which includes adding three more courses of block to the house to get to that that height, that ceiling height that we wanted to achieve in the first level. The first thing we needed to do was remove the windows from their openings because we're going to be expanding those windows, adding patio doors, and making the space or 
increasing the amount of view that we have out the back of the house because that's what we're here for. With all that out of the way, then we can move on to actually filling the cores. About every 32 inches, we need to add grout or grout those cores, which is essentially adding the cement into the cores that ties all of those cinder blocks together vertically and makes that stronger. Problem was, there was no grout in any of these cinder blocks, so it was kind of a weak wall. But not only are we adding that grout, we're also going to be adding rebar in there that's going to be sticking out and tie our new foundation to our old foundation. All right, so our foundation is in and we've got, we added that two feet that we were looking for to the foundation to make our interior ceiling height a lot taller. Now we've gone ahead, the old sole plate did not have any type of fastening to the foundation wall. It was just resting on top. There's no sill sealer, which, you know, this is kind of, uh, I don't know how new it is, but it is a, it wasn't, it wasn't being done back when they built this house. So. We've gone ahead and we've installed in this, this top course of block is completely filled with concrete and we installed mud sill anchors from Simpson Strong Tie. Now we're gonna go ahead and lay the sill sealer on top of the foundation and then we can come back with our new two by eight treated sill plate and secure that in place with these brackets and some screws. something about having a house that's just on jacks right above my head that makes me uneasy. All right, so we've got our new foundation. These are cinder blocks, and then we've got the sill sealer, and then we've got the sill plate. Now the sill sealer's intention is to seal, seal any variations between the concrete foundation and the wood sill plate. That's gonna prevent air movement and bugs from getting in because this is a common area for those issues. 
Now, it does a good job, but it's not perfect in all of the areas. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim back this sill sealer, and then we're gonna apply a bead of DAPS <clears throat> polyurethane construction adhesive sealant. And that's gonna completely seal this up and make sure that we don't get any of those bugs in that air infiltration from the outside to the end. Now, normally you would do this from the outside, but the way that this project is, we've got the sheathing and the siding that are overlapping this joint, making it inaccessible to be able to do it. So now, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and apply that sealant, trim everything back and get it sealed up. All right, so the house is set back down in place. We got the block filled in from where the beams were. There were some openings there that we needed to come back and fill in. We also got the sill plate installed and everything is ready to go. And we really lucked out as far as the weather goes. We had like 60 degree days for the most part through the end or late November, which is exceptional for what we're trying to do here. But we've really been rolling the dice as far as that weather and we need to get this thing sealed back in before it gets really cold, which I know is right around the corner. So you already got a little preview of what our next video is gonna be. We're gonna be installing the windows and doors. Luckily we had an extra hand, some muscle to be able to get these big eight foot wide patio doors in place. Now we just need to finish flashing them in as well as getting the rest of the doors and windows in. And that will be our next video. Until next time, be safe and happy building.